Silhouette of Modern Design presents, Believe It or Not, Bob Ripley. <laughs> yes, here's the man whose whole life is a constant worldwide hunt for facts. The man who makes his living by telling the truth. The man who knows the places making news today, knows them because he's been there. Yes, Bob Ripley has been there, been in more than 200 countries, traveled over a half million miles, always seeking, always hunting for facts. Facts that put you right with him in a front row seat of world events. Believe it or not, it's true, says Bob Ripley. And here he is. Greetings, everybody, and welcome. Most of you listen regularly to Gable Heater and his keen analysis of the news. You probably heard him tonight. If you did, you know that he spoke about dictators, Bolivia, and the Argentine Republic. Well, in my hunt for facts, I found that Argentina gave us the first of the modern dictators, the infamous Ramirez in 1814, and later Manuel Rosas. Rosas never went to school, so he mistrusted and hated educated people. He established stormtroopers, and like Hitler, abolished freedom of the press. He dissolved parliament, organized his own Gestapo, the Bazarkas, with orders to kill 7,000 people a year for no reason at all. Master of cruelty and mass murder, Rosas was the most bitterly hated and the first of modern dictators, believe it or not. Bob Ripley will be back in just a moment. Smokers, even with one eye shut, you can see Pell-Mell's modern design. The minute you look at a Pell-Mell, you see Pell-Mell's greater length. That's modern design. And when you light your cigarette, you can see that Pell-Mell's greater length travels the smoke further, over a 20% longer route of Pell-Mell's traditionally fine tobaccos. Pell-Mell's greater length filters the smoke naturally, diminishes heat and bite on the way, gives you a cooler, smoother, better-tasting smoke. Ladies and gentlemen, believe the evidence of your own eyes. Pell-Mell gives you visible proof of its advantage to smokers. Your eye tells why. Pell-Mell's modern design filters the smoke, gives it that cooler, smoother taste that means Pell-Mell. And here again is Bob Ripley, the man who makes his living by hunting for facts. There's nothing in the world more exciting than constantly hunting for facts. I've traveled all over the world in this hunt. I've had many thrills, but there's no thrill like sailing into New York Harbor and seeing the Statue of Liberty. Yes, it's great to be an American and the greatest privilege of being an American is being able to vote. You may be indifferent about your right to vote. You may think, oh, oh, what difference does my one vote make? Well, it may be that your one vote will win an election, and the importance of just one vote can't be overestimated. My Believe It or Not for tonight is one of the most amazing stories I've found in my search for the truth. Now, on with the hunt. The time, the year 1830, the place, the town of Eve in Indiana. In the courthouse yard, a scaffold has been erected. A man is about to be hanged. His name is Thomas Evans. He is walking up two pine steps to the platform. Thomas Evans, do you wish to say anything before I do my painful duty? All I can say is that I'm innocent. I'm weary of repeating it to people who won't believe me. As sheriff of this county, I can but do my duty. Now, the blindfold. I am innocent. I am innocent. Stop! Stop the hanging! It's the governor! Ah, looks like we're just in time, Sheriff. Thomas Evans? Yes. Thomas Evans, do you know in whose presence you stand? You're Governor Ray, aren't you? Yes. There are only two powers in the whole world who could save you from hanging by the neck until you were dead. One is the great God of the universe, and the other myself, Governor Brown Ray, Chief Magistrate of the State of Indiana. Praise be, sir. Thomas Evans, you are pardoned. And for this, you have to thank the man who came here with me, Daniel Kelso, newly elected district attorney. Remember that name, Daniel Kelso. Yes, Governor, I will remember. 
I shall never forget you, Daniel Kelso. I only wanted to see justice done. I shall always remember, sir. I owe my life to you. This is a miracle. Twelve years after this amazing escape from death, Daniel Kelso ran for the state senate. In his home, Thomas Evans, once condemned to hang, is on his deathbed. He calls his wife. Martha. Martha. Land's sake, Tom. What do you want now? Today's election day, Martha. Well, what's so important about voting today? Daniel Kelso. The polling place is just two miles away. Get me there, Martha. Get me there. Now, Tom, you can't... If it's the last thing I do, I'll vote for Daniel Kelso. He saved my life. Hitch the team, Martha. Hitch the team. In my constant hunt for facts, I found that Thomas Evans did cast his vote and Daniel Kelso won the election for state senator by one vote. Later, Kelso backed a man for the Senate. That man was Edward Hannigan, who was elected to the United States Senate by Daniel Kelso's one vote. Then on February the 28th, 1845, the United States Senate faces a momentous decision. Gentlemen, we have before us today the question of whether or not the state of Texas shall be admitted to the Union. You've heard the arguments. We've had a vote before, resulting in a tie, a deadlock. Now we will take another vote. Gentlemen, the roll call. Senator from Alabama? Aye. The senator from Georgia? Nay. The senator from Maryland? Nay. The vote is complete. The total. The result, Mr. Chairman, is 26 to 26. <laughs> Mr. Chairman! Mr. Chairman! The chair recognizes Senator Hannigan of Indiana. Mr. Chairman, I herewith change my vote from nay to aye. By changing his vote from nay to aye, Senator Hannigan has broken the tie. The United States Senate has voted to admit to the Union the state of Texas. <laughs> Surely that series of events certainly shows us the importance of one vote. First, Thomas Evans was saved from hanging by Daniel Kelso. Twelve years later, that same Thomas Evans rose from his deathbed to vote for Daniel Kelso for the state senate of Indiana. Kelso was elected by one vote. Then, by virtue of Kelso's vote, again one vote, Edward Hannigan was elected to the United States Senate. Then, when the Senate voted on whether or not Texas should be admitted to the Union, the one vote of Edward Hannigan brought into this nation the great and glorious state of Texas. So, you see, the importance of just one vote can't be overestimated. And remember that next time it's your privilege to cast a vote, for your one vote might change the whole course of human events, believe it or not. <laughs> Hancock. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're still smoking old-fashioned short cigarettes, here's an interesting thing to do. See what happens the first time you light a pell-mell. Unconsciously, you hold the match a half inch closer to your face than you have to, a good half inch inside the tip of your pell-mell. That means you've discovered modern design, something a short cigarette can't possibly give you. Now, smoke that pell-mell. See what modern design does for you. From the very first puff, Pell-Mell's greater length travels the smoke further, diminishes heat and bite on the way. Pell-Mell's greater length filters the smoke naturally over a 20% longer route of Pell-Mell's traditionally fine tobaccos. That's modern design, 
Helmel's modern design. It filters the smoke, gives it that cooler, smoother taste that means Helmel. <laughs> and one for all. Yes, that's the way we're going to win the war. Over here, all together working for victory. Over there, all together fighting for victory. I'm sure we all wonder what our boys on the fighting fronts from Italy to the South Pacific do in such little spare time as they have. Well, one thing they do is write Bob Ripley female letters about the things they talk about and argue about. Bob gets a great many of these female letters, and he thought you might like to know what our boys are thinking and saying. And so, for those boys over there, here are Bob Ripley's answers to their female letters. Thank you, Don. We'll answer our female in, in just a moment. But first, ladies and gentlemen, may I remind you to write to our boys and girls in the armed forces. Don't put it off. Do it now. Send a good, newsy, female letter to the boys and girls in uniform who are out there doing their best to bring us a final victory, the victory symbolized by the letter V... The same letter V you see on the back of every package of your Pell Mell cigarette. Right you are, Bob. And now for the female department. Tonight we have a letter from Seaman First Class A.P. Burdett, U.S. Coast Guard, who writes, Dear Mr. Ripley, as a result of a little argument among the boys, we would like an answer to this question. What family in the United States has the largest number of children in the armed forces? Well, Bob, in your hunt for facts, have you found the answer to that one? Yes, I have, Don. The honor of being the person to give more children to the service of her country than anyone else belongs to Mrs. Van Kutren, who has 12 children in the service. She certainly is a mother of whom we all can be proud. Three of her daughters are wax, one son is a Marine, one is in the Army, and one is in the Merchant Marine, and six are in the Navy, believe it or not. <laughs> Bob will be back in just a moment. Smokers, whenever you buy cigarettes, remember, Pell-Mell's modern design gives you two important benefits. First, Pell-Mell's greater length travels the smoke further, diminishes heat and bite on the way. Second, Pell-Mell's greater length filters the smoke, gives it that cooler, smoother taste that means Pell-Mell. That's why, wherever particular people congregate, you see Pell-Mell in the smart red package. And now, Bob, I think we'd all like to have a believe it or not that we can take a crack at. Have you got a believe it or not question like yes, that in your box yes, tonight? Yes, Don, uh, I have. And here it is. We've all heard of the seven seas. Mm -hmm. But can you name them? Name the seven seas? Yes. Why, that's a cinch. Now, let me see now. There's the Atlantic and the Pacific and the... Uh, all uh, right, keep on trying, Don. I'll give you the answers tomorrow night, but I warn you, the question isn't as easy as you think, because I've never met a sailor who could even name the seven seas, believe it or not. This is Don Hancock reminding you to listen in tomorrow night when Pell Mell, famous cigarettes, the cigarette of modern design, will again present the man whose whole life is a constant hunt for facts. Believe it or not, Bob Ripley. This is Mutual.